So let's get started with this photograph. And we're going to take it into the edit module. So we can talk about editing. So to start out real quick, we're just going to kind of do a refresher of the edit module here. So inside of the edit module, I'm just going to start on this left hand side. So this left hand side is where we're going to have all of our tools. So this is the tool well. And if you're confused on what these tools do, just hover over it and it will have a little animation of what that tool does. It will also tell you the short or the keyboard shortcut for that tool. It will give you a little description. And if you want to learn more, you can go down to this learn how button. And if you click that, it will take you to a video tutorial on how to use that tool. One thing about these tools is if I click on one, I'm going to have a tool modifier bar up here that I can use to modify that tool. And each tool has different modifiers, but they all live up in this top section. So if you have a tool selected over here, you're going to have different modifiers up top. Oops, I don't want to crop that. So we'll reset that. We'll crop it in a second, but we'll leave it as it is right now. And one other thing I want to uh, mention is down here, a lot of people can kind of hide these or they don't know if they hid them and so they're looking for their presets. But if you have your preset window hidden, to enable it, you can click this icon right here down at the bottom left corner. And now you have all of your presets in here that you can use to modify your photo as well. So then we have this large thumbnail preview of our photograph. And then to the right, we have four different panes or tabs that we can use to view different information about our photograph. So we have nav, which we can use this to view, zoom in, and see different parts of our photograph. We have our levels, so this is showing our histogram. And if you're not familiar with the histogram, this histogram works by this left side is your shadows or your blacks. And then over here on the right is your highlights. So in the middle is going to be your midtones. And this white right here is going to be the luminance or the brightness of your image. And you can see that it's kind of going over to the left and there's not much of it over here to the right. That's meaning this photo is a little bit underexposed. So there's a lot more dark areas on this image than there are lighter areas on this photograph. So if we move the exposure to the right, it would move this histogram to the right and if I moved it to the left, it would move the histogram to the left. And then these colors are just showing you your luminous values for those specific colors. But don't worry about that right now as far as editing goes. I would just keep in mind that this white area right here, that's showing you your luminance. So the more of this you have over to the left, the more underexposed your image is. And the more of this you have to the right, the more overexposed your photo. Typically, in a perfect world, if you got a perfectly exposed photograph, it would be kind of a little mountain right in the middle but that's kind of impossible to achieve or relatively hard. So most of the time you're going to get these kind of weird waves that are kind of all over the place. But just keep in mind that the more they're in the middle of your image, the better. Okay, so then we have info. So this is going to show us our info about the camera, the photograph, and your lens. So you have your camera, your lens information, the date, the time, also what kind of file it is. So this is telling us that it's a raw file format. If you shot in a JPEG, this would say JPEG. It's giving us our um, metadata. So we have the ISO, um, the shutter speed, the aperture, all of that stuff, the file name, color space. And then below that, we have settings applied. So settings applied is going to show us all of the different adjustments or s uh, settings that we've used to modify this photograph. And we haven't done anything to it yet, so we don't have anything in here. But this is a great way to look at what you've, uh, what you've done to a photograph simply by just scrolling into the settings applied area. And then to the right of that, we have history. So history is going to show us all of the steps that we've taken to modify the shot. So you'll see that we opened this photograph. So it started with open. And then when I click the crop tool, it said I modified the crop. And then I modified the crop again. So then it showed me the crop tool. So I can go back on any of these and I can just go back to open simply by clicking that and that will undo all of those. But if I want to go forward a step, let's say I want to go back to that crop that I did when I was kind of just messing around. Now if I click that, it will take me back to that crop time or that crop time. It will take me to, back to that adjustment when I crop the photograph. So I'm just going to go back to open here so we have it kind of brand new. It was right when we had it, right when we had it when we opened the shot. Okay, so below that, actually I'm just going to, going to go into levels here so we can watch the levels as we edit. But below that, we have layers. So this is showing us all of our layers. And we're not going to really talk about the layers too much in this video. We're going to be spending the majority of our time talking about editing. But this was just kind of a little refresher for those who are new to PhotoRaw or those who haven't touched it in a minute. So 
Now that we've kind of talked about some of these areas, we're gonna move on to these four tabs here. And we're gonna start with this develop tab. So inside of the develop tab, this is where we're gonna be modifying kind of the foundational look for our shot. And below that we have our tone and color pane. And tone and color is a great place to kind of modify your foundational look and give your, your photo that look that it had whenever you shot the scene. So this is kind of the area you wanna fix your photograph or you know, correct an underexposed image or bring light into an underexposed image. And then we have other panes below that. We have our details. This is where we're gonna be modifying our sharpening and our noise reduction. And then we have lens correction. This will automatically detect a lens for you, but if it doesn't, you can go in here and kind of modify distortion as you please. And another thing that a lot of people don't um, use there often is this transform pane. So the transform area is going to allow you to modify your crop. So if I wanted to make this mountain a little bit bigger or seem like it's a little bit bigger, I could modify this vertical slider and make it a little bit larger so it looks like we're kind of staring down more, making the mountain seem larger, or I can make it smaller, make it seem like we're up in the air a bit more. So this is going to modify your crop. I'm just gonna turn that off a little bit. And so now that we've talked about the develop tab and these tools, let's get into actually modifying an image. So when you first go into edit, one thing that you're gonna do is you're either going to go in here and go into tone and color and start modifying the look, or you're going to crop. I feel like there's kind of two types of people. You either crop first or you edit first. And either way is fine. I mean, you can always redo a crop or readjust the crop and you can always go in and readjust and edit because everything is all non-destructive. So what I tend to do is I'll kind of switch back and forth. But for this particular photo, because I want to kind of harness the look of this mountain here, I'm going to crop out a lot of this excess sky and this water. So I'm going to grab my crop tool by hitting C on my keyboard. So by hitting C on my keyboard, I pulled up my crop tool. And now I know that it's a preset crop up here because of my tool modifier bar. So it's a 16 by 9 preset crop, but I can choose any of these different modifiers. I think I'm going to leave it at a 16 by 9. And now I can pull this in, and I can remove some of that area. And let's just put it about right, right there. I think that looks pretty good like that. Boom. So now that we have kind of this large kind of tonal area sky and then this little mountain in here. So now that we've cropped the photograph, we can head over to our develop tab and we can start editing it and setting our base look. So inside tone and color, like I said, this is where I kind of like to fix my photo or give it the look I was seeing when I was shooting this image. And one thing that I like to do first is I, I tend to shoot in RAW, but sometimes I'll shoot JPEG. And if you shoot RAW, you can modify your camera profile here. So this is just saying I can choose a different camera profile like the ones in my camera. Well, one of my favorites is this on one landscape. You can see by choosing that on one landscape, it's really done a lot to my image. It kind of dehazed it, brought out some of the exposure, and removed some of that um, kind of fogginess within the image. And the difference between JPEG and RAW, or RAW and um, different file formats that are compressed, is that when you shoot RAW, you're basically telling your camera, hey, don't remove any of the information from this scene. Whatever you see in the sensor right now, record all of that information and record it into a file. Whereas when you shoot in JPEG, you're telling the camera, okay, shoot this scene, but compress the image file a little bit so that it's a little bit smaller, but maintain as much information as you possibly can. So when you're shooting in RAW or you're modifying photos that are RAW file formats, you have a little bit more power as far as it goes, um, as far as it, you have a little bit more power when it comes to the RAW capabilities of that image, so you can modify the, the tonalities a little bit differently. So if you have really dark, deep shadow tones, if you shoot a raw file, you can actually modify those a little bit more than if you had a JPEG. So just shooting in raw just gives you a little bit more power as far as the editing room goes, but one or the other isn't wrong or bad. It just kind of depends on what photos you're editing and what kind of shooter that you are. But I tend to shoot in raw, so I'm gonna choose a different camera profile and we'll leave it at that on one landscape. So below that we have tone in here. So our tone is where we're gonna be modifying the tonality sliders. Those are exposure, contrast, your midtones, your blacks, things that are gonna be modifying the tonality. So for these sliders right here, if you're not really sure what they do, you can hover over them and it will tell you kind of a, a general gist of what that slider does. So this exposure slider makes your photo lighter or darker. So if I wanna brighten my image, or I want to make my image darker, this is the slider to do that. 
Well, for this photo, I kind of want to pull back on the exposure a little bit. And the reason I want to pull back on the exposure is so that I can bring back some of the detail within the sky. And also I want to create a little bit more contrast on this mountain. So I'm going to head down and I'll pull back on the con or the exposure a little bit. And you can see that's bringing in a little bit more detail back into those clouds. And it's also kind of bringing back some of that color that's there in that little sunset. So below that, we have different sliders that we can use also. But I think for now, I'm going to go down to my midtones and my shadows. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to bring out kind of the exposure or set the base exposure. And then I'm going to add contrast in a second. So our midtone slider right here, I like to think about your midtones as the grays in your photograph. So these grays kind of in the sky here and in this mountain and in this water, those are all of your midtones. They're not quite your shadows and they're not quite your highlights. They're right in between at your midtones. So now if I pull up on my midtones, see how it's brightening those areas in my image? It's brightened the sky, this mountain, and then this water here, but it's kind of avoided these shadowy areas. Well, we can actually use a different slider to target just those specific areas. We can go down into this shadow slider here and the shadow slider is going to target those specific dark areas in your photo, and it's going to give them a little bit more detail. Now, one thing about modifying the exposure, your midtones, or your shadows, is that you're going to be removing contrast from your photograph if you pull up on them. So because I've pulled up on my midtones and my shadows, if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, yeah, I've brightened my image, but I've lost a lot of that nice detail contrast that was there before. So there's two different sliders I can use to bring in contrast. And one is either the contrast slider or we have our black slider here. So the first slider that I would use is probably your contrast. And that's just going to increase contrast across your entire photo. So if I pull up on that, see how that adds in a nice little bit of contrast? And I can do the same thing with my black slider, except for with the black slider, this is going to be adding in true black into your image. So watch as I, I'm going to hold down my J key. And by holding down my J key, this is going to show me my true white and my true black, which is my clipping warnings. So my clipping warnings are going to show me all of my true white without any detail, which would be a blown out area, or it's going to show me my true black without any detail. Or it's, excuse me. Or it's going to show me my true black without any detail, which would be an underexposed area. So if I hold down my J key and I pull back on my black slider, see how it's bringing in that, that blue overlay? That's showing me my true black in my photograph. I typically like to keep my true black about right there, maybe like a, an 80th of the photograph, just a little bit. But it does add in a nice bit of contrast to your photograph. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, we've done a pretty good job just by setting the tone to kind of bring out the nice details and color in this photograph. So below that, we have our structure and our haze. Well, actually, let's go up. Sorry, I'm, I'm skipping whites and highlights. So now let's go up and let's talk about our highlights and our whites. So this highlight slider is going to control the highlights of your photograph. So your highlights would be considered kind of this really bright area right here and anywhere that's not a midtone or a shadow. Well, your highlights are a little bit different than your whites because your whites are incorporating true white, just like your blacks are. So if I pull up on this highlight slider, it's going to kind of control or remove highlights from my photo. And if I pull back on it, it's going to incorporate more highlights into my image. So with this photo, I actually want to pull up on it a little bit to remove a little bit of those highlights and kind of hone in on the detail of this mountain here. Because now what I want to do is I can head down to my white slider and this image is looking a little bit too flat. And that's because I've removed a lot of the highlights into it. Well, to have contrast, you first need white and black. So I'm going to go into my whites and I'll add in a little bit more white. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I feel like that's as good as it gets as far as just modifying the basic tone for this image. And now we can move on and we can move on to our structure and our haze. So your structure slider is going to add in detail or micro contrast across your entire photograph. So if I pull up on this, you can see it adds in a ton of nice detail. Or if I pull down, it removes it. One thing about the structure slider is that if you're wanting to apply detail, you can apply detail within a few different areas inside Photo Raw. You can apply it inside Develop. 
you can apply it inside effects, and you can also apply it with a local adjustment. So don't fear if you pull up on the structure slider too much or you can't get your detail set in tone and color, because you can always go into effects and you can add it selectively by using a mask. So I'm just gonna leave my structure how it is, and then we'll talk about haze. So the haze slider reduces the look of haze or fog in your photo. So if I want less haze, I can pull up on this, or pull back on it, and it will remove some of that haze. You can see it's removing a lot of that haze and just kind of focusing on the highlights and the contrast. And then if I pull up on it, it's going to bring some of it back. Well, I think we can leave it about negative 10. I think that looks pretty good. And so now we can move on to color. So the color area, this is where we're going to be modifying the color, the temperature, um, correcting for different areas on the photograph that didn't match the color of the scene when we shot it. So the first thing I like to do is I'm going to go in here and in these options, I'm just going to choose daylight because I shot it. Actually, because it was a raw photo, I'm actually going to click this color and I'm going to choose the Kelvin. So it shows me my actual temperature in Kelvin. And then I'll make sure I have daylight selected because before it was a little bit too blue. So I'll go down to daylight and then if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, voila, I think that looks pretty good as far as just the temperature goes. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, I think we have a good sort of foundational look for the photograph. So now that we've set our foundational look, one thing I like to do is I'll go into effects and then I'll start adding different filters. So let's go into our effects tab here. And again, develop is kind of the area where you're gonna be setting that foundational look and fixing things, um, fixing large tonal areas like blown out areas and things like that. And then effects is where you're going to be modifying kind of the creative style of your shot. So if we add a filter, you can see that we have all of these different filters that we can apply to our shot. And if you're not sure what one of these filter does, just hover over it and it will give you a description. It will give you a before and after with that filter applied to a photo. And it will also give you keywords that you can use to search for that different filter. So if I'm looking for something that sunshine. So if I want to bring out a little bit of a sun look, I'll just go to sunshine. And now that I applied that sunshine filter, if I turn this off and on, see how it's applying sort of a sunshiny look? It's kind of trying to emulate a sunshine look on your photograph by increasing the highlights and kind of darkening the shadows. So it's great for times like this when you want just sort of a sun effect on your mountain. And with these different filters, so if I apply a filter, I have different options here that I can use to modify that filter. So in this sunshine filter, I can modify the amount, warmth, if I want it a little more warm or a little more cool. I have my saturation, I have glow, and then I have these more preset styles that I can use to modify it as well. And then if I modify any of these, say I modify it, I actually bring it a little more, like that, maybe a little glow. Say I want to save this style as a preset, I can go in my more styles and I can choose save new style. And now I can save that as, we'll just name it editing explain fave. So now if I go back, I have that editing explain fave that I can click and apply it to my photo whenever I want that same sunshine look. But with each of these filters, it's going to be different for every filter, what you can actually adjust. So if I add a filter now and we'll add dynamic contrast, you can see that I have different modifiers in here to modify this filter. So in dynamic contrast, I can modify the size of the detail, and then I can modify the tone of the detail that I'm applying. Whereas in sunshine, I was modifying the amount, the warmth, the saturation, and the glow. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, That's how to modify a photo quickly using develop and then a few different effects. So let's move on and let's talk about modifying a photo in develop and then modifying it in effects and local adjustments, but by using masks. Okay, so again, I probably wouldn't crop this photo. I think it looks good as far as the composition goes. So we'll just start in develop and inside our tone and color. For this particular image, um, just kind of glancing at it, I think we could probably just pull up on the mid-tone areas in here and then we can pull up on some of the shadowy tones and we probably don't actually have to modify our exposure slider at all. So let's first start with our midtones, and we'll pull up on those midtones and see how that's kind of pulling up on these grays in here. It's 
pulling up on these grays and these rocks and um, on Mount St. Helens right here. So your midtones again are kind of your grays in your image. So I think that's doing a pretty good job of pulling up on those. And then again, let's go in here and let's pull up on some of these shadowy tones a little bit. Perfect, I think that looks pretty good. So now that we've kind of brought out these tones, one thing that we could do is we'll add in contrast again. Because remember that when we pull up on those shadows or midtones or exposure, we're removing contrast. So we need to incorporate some of that contrast to bring back detail and make sure our image isn't so flat. So I'll pull up on this contrast a little bit. And remember that you can pull up on your contrast and you can pull up on your midtones again. You don't have to kind of be set to a look. You can always go in and readjust each sort of slider as you see fit because everything in Photo Raw again is non-destructive and you can always go readjust. So I think that looks good as far as our midtones go in that area. Now I'm just going to pull up on my whites again. Perfect. Maybe a little bit more just so my image isn't so flat. Just like that. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm not really going to modify the exposure at all because there's not really an interesting area in my sky. And I think we're more focused on this mountain right here. So we'll probably leave this tone and color area how it is. And then our structure and haze, I think I'm going to leave the structure how it is and I'll apply the detail inside of effects. And then I'll leave haze how it is as well. And then for tone and color, let's see how it looks with a little bit cooler of a temperature. Um, anything, let's warm it up a little bit. Maybe like right there. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard. Sweet. I think that looks pretty good. And then we can go in and with our saturation slider, one thing I'm going to do to this photo is I'm going to pull it all the way down. And then I'm just going to incrementally kind of pull it up until I reach kind of the saturation point I want. I think that looks good like that. Looks like some, some bright golds and grays and greens in here. So I think it looks pretty good like that. So now we can go in and let's go into effects and let's actually do an adjustment and let's modify it with a mask. So let's add a filter and I'm gonna add dynamic contrast. So if I turn this dynamic contrast filter off and on, you'll see that it's applied to the entire image. Well, inside Photo Raw, to, to view our masking options, we're gonna click this little icon right here, this rectangle with a circle in it. So now we have our masking options pulled up. And one thing to keep in mind with your masking options is that white reveals and black conceals. So in masking, if your mask view is completely white, that means it's revealing the entire filter or adjustment onto your image. So we can see here in this dynamic contrast, our entire mask view is white. So if we turn this off and on, it's revealing the entire filter onto our photograph. Well, we have this button right here, which is called invert, and this will allow us to turn it black or invert the mask. So I can invert this, and now nothing is being applied because we've inverted this mask and we've removed it from our photo. So now let's say we want to apply this dynamic contrast filter selectively, and we only want it applied to this mountain area right here. Well, because we've inverted this mask and we have nothing applied, we can use our masking brush. So to grab your masking brush, you can either head over to your tools over here, and you can go into your masking tools right here. And then up top in this tool modifier bar here, your masking brush is going to live right here. And so one important thing about the masking brush is your mode. So your mode is going to determine whether you're painted an effect or you paint out an effect. Well, if we're thinking about our mask, if we have this mask black, that means it's concealing the entire filter. So we're not going to have anything to paint out because nothing is being applied. So in this particular situation, we need to change our paint mode to paint in. So I'm going to hold down shift and hit X on my keyboard. And that's going to change my mode from paint in to paint out. So you'll notice that it switched from a minus sign to a plus sign. And you can, of course, go up here and you could click which mode. But Shift X is a pretty quick way to do it. And then we have size, which a quick way to change the size of your brush is with the bracket keys on your keyboard. So I'll if I want to increase the brush size, I can go bigger by using the right bracket or left will decrease the size of my brush. And then we're not going to get too much into masking today, but I would probably keep your feathering at 100 and your opacity at 100 just to start with masking to make sure that your brush edge is really soft and then opacity at 100 will make sure that you're painting in the entire effect. 
So now that we have paint in selected and we have our brush size that we want it, I'm just going to click and drag and I can brush this dynamic contrast filter on selectively and I can apply it strictly to these mountainous areas in my photo. So now if I head over to this dynamic contrast filter and I view this mask, you can see that instead of having the entire filter mask white, it's selectively applied that white onto that area where we brush it onto, and now it's only applied to this mountain. So now if I turn this off and on, it does a good job of only applying this to this specific area. So now let's say we want to modify a specific area in our photograph, but we want to use an adjustment that deals more with exposure or tonalities rather than creative style. So one tab that we should use if we want to fix an area or we want to adjust tonal if we want to adjust tonalities is we need to use our local adjustments tab. So let's use a local adjustment and let's kind of tone down this area of grass and flowers here. So I'm going to head over to my local adjustment tab and in your local adjustment tab Notice in my local adjustment here, how if I view my mask, it's completely black. Well, that's because when you add a local adjustment, it's not applied to your photo yet. Where in effects, once we applied that filter, it was automatically applied to our entire image. It's the opposite for local adjustments. You actually have to go in and modify the mask to apply it to your photo. Well, remember how it was black, so we need to paint this filter or adjustment in. So I already have my mode set to paint in, so I'm going to go over and I'm just going to brush this on this kind of area of grass over here. Oops, and I kind of messed up over there. So just brush this on right there. Cool. So obviously if I turn this off, it's pretty intense. But one thing I could do is I could head over to my opacity and I can lower it so that it's not so strong on my photograph. But you'll see it does a good job of kind of toning this area down so we can really focus on the mountain here. And an awesome way that you can use um, local adjustments is you can actually blend them in using different gradients. So let's say I want to do the same thing over here and I want to modify this large kind of area on my image. Well, if you want to modify large areas on your photograph, like a corner or a foreground or a background, I would recommend using a gradient. So you can use gradients on your filter masks and you can also use them on your local adjustment masks. But let's use it on a local adjustment mask and we'll tone down this area a lot more naturally. So I'm just going to go over and I'm going to reset this mask. And I'll make sure it's set to 100. And up here in the tool modifier bar here, we're going to grab our local adjustment gradient, which is this little icon right here. So I forgot to say, but whenever you add a new local adjustment layer, it's going to automatically select your adjustment brush for you. So your local adjustment brush can be grabbed over here in your local tools, and then it's going to live up top to the left of your adjustable gradient right here. You can also grab it by hitting K on your keyboard. So I'm going to hit K, I got my local adjustment brush, and now I want to grab my adjustable gradient. So I'm going to hold down shift, hit K. Now I have my adjustable gradient. So with this adjustable gradient, we're going to be modifying masks by using gradients and shapes. So by using gradients, we can really make it blend in a lot more naturally with our photograph. So for this gradient right here, notice how I wanted to apply this to this bottom kind of corner to the left. Well, an easy way to do that would be to use a gradient and I can set it so that it's only applied to this bottom area. So let's go into our presets here. And now we can choose a preset. And if I look to the left, you'll see how that white part is on the bottom and the black is up top. Well, if we think about white reveals and black conceals and masking, well, if we think about white reveals and black conceals and masking, this bottom part is going to be revealing our mask and this top part that's black is going to be concealing it. So I'll leave that like it is. And now I'm just gonna drop this down. And now I can modify this gradient to fit the photo. So to ref so to move a gradient, you're going to grab this larger handle and you can move this around like that. And then if you want to rotate your gradient, you can use this smaller handle and you can rotate it. 
And then if you want to feather your gradient to blend it in more naturally, you can grab these perforated edges here. And now watch as I pull up. And now it's blended in a lot more naturally with my photo. So now if I turn this off and on, it goes into the scene a lot better and it's not so harsh around the edges like it was when I painted it in with a brush. So now let's go in and I'll add one last effect. I'll add a filter and we'll just add another sunshine filter. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, in just a few steps by modifying develop and effect and a local adjustment, we've really kind of brought out the tonality in this photo. And let's edit one last photo here and let me know if there's any questions while we're waiting this photo to load. All right, so we have this photo of the Seattle skyline here. And let's go into develop real quick. And the first thing I want to, I want to do to this photograph is I definitely want to go in and I want to chop off kind of this area over here with this power line. And then I want to chop off this area with this power pole as well. So I'm going to hit C on my keyboard. And I think a 16 by 9 will do, so I'll just pull in on this. And then I can move this over. And I'm kind of aligning this crop. It's kind of a rule of thirds. So I have the, the lights on this highway with this rule of thirds and then the cities um, on this rule of thirds area. So I think that looks like a pretty, I think that looks like an okay crop. Maybe up a little bit more. And then we can move this in just a hair. Perfect. So I'm just gonna hit enter. And there we go. Now we have a cropped shot that we can start working with inside develop. So inside of my tone and color pane, again, for this photograph, I think I'm going to try that on one landscape again and see how it works. So I'll cram a profile and I'll click on one landscape. Oh, that added in too much contrast and it darkened up the photograph too much. So let's head down and let's see what these other ones do. Ooh, there we go. Let's use on one neutral. I think that looks a lot better. Yeah, there we go. It's kind of brought out some of those shadowy areas. And so we can see a little bit more of the city now. So now we can head down to our tone. And so as far as the tone goes for this photo, I don't want to pull up on the exposure because I'm going to be pulling up on the exposure for the entire image. And that's going to brighten everything. And I think I have kind of the, the exposure set. I just want to bring out some of the certain tones. And one of those tones is the midtones. So if I pull up on my midtones, that's going to bring out some of the grays in this image. It's going to mainly bring out a lot of these areas over here, but it's also going to bring out a lot of the tones in these buildings. So watch as I pull up on my midtones. See how that's pulling out some of the grays in the building in here and some of the brightness on the road. And don't worry, we're going to go in here and we'll remove we'll remove this bridge really easily. But for now, just pretend that doesn't even exist. So now that I've pulled up on my midtones, I'm going to head down and I'm going to pull up on my shadows to pull out some of the darker tones in my photo. Maybe like that. So you'll notice that when I pulled up on those shadow tones, the darker areas like in these trees and in these black buildings, those are the tones that got brought out the most. And so now we're going to go back and remember how I was talking about when we pull up on the exposure or the shadows or the midtones, we're going to be probably losing contrast. And so we've done just that and we pull up on our midtones and our shadows. So we need to go back and incorporate some sort of contrast. So I'm going to go in and I'll pull up on the contrast slider a little bit and then I'll head down. And in my black slider, I'm going to set my black point. So I'm going to hold down J on my keyboard, and then I'll pull back on my blacks a little bit until I have a lot more true black. Because we're shooting at night, there's probably going to be a lot of true black in your photograph because everything is really dark. So I think that looks pretty good right in here. So as far as the temperature goes, I'm just going to go down to my color real quick, and I'm just going to click Daylight. Oops. No, nope, we're just going to leave it how it is, as shot. So I'm just going to leave my color as shot. And if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, 
I think that looks good as far as the base tonality looks. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go in and I want to remove this bridge. Well, I'm looking at this area of trees in here, and one thing I could probably do is I could probably just brush on a local adjustment and use paint with color, and I could just paint over this area and remove it really easily. So let's go in, I'll add a new local adjustment layer, and in this new local adjustment layer, I'm gonna head down and select paint with color. So now that I have paint with color selected, I'm gonna use this color dropper here, and this is going to allow me to pick a color, and then I can actually brush this color onto selected areas. So I'm gonna use my color picker tool, and I'm gonna drop it on this area right next to this bridge, as close as I can get it. Perfect. So now I have paint with color selected. I'm gonna make sure that I have my mode set to paint in with my adjustment brush. And now I'm just gonna brush this on this area on this bridge and just remove it from my photo. Sweet. So now if we turn this adjustment off and on, it does a good job of just hiding that bridge. And all we did was that we painted with color with a local adjustment layer. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I think it's looking pretty good so far. The only thing I wanna do now is I wanna bring in kind of a, a diluting effect to this area on the bottom so that it blends in more with this kind of black that I painted in. And I also want to correct the color of the city. So let's go in and I'll go into effects. I'm going to add a filter. And let's add a filter that deals with the color of our city. So I'm going to add a split tone filter. And split tone basically deals with your highlight color and your shadow color. So you'll see in the split tone filter, I can choose a color for my highlights. And then I can also choose a color for my shadows. And then I have these different options to blend those in with each other. Well, one of my favorite things to do with split toning is I'll head over to these more preset styles and I'll just use one of these preset styles in here. And one of my favorite ones for cities is this red cyan. So if I turn this off and on here, you can see how it takes a lot of that orange out of the city and kind of incorporates more of a steel kind of industrial look into the buildings. So now that we've brought in some different color, let's add one last filter and I'm gonna add a nice vignette. And inside of this vignette, one of the, f and inside of this vignette, and inside of this vignette, one of the best styles is this big softy preset. So if I click that big softy, you can see it really does a good job of kind of toning down this area on the bottom, and it blends in really well with that adjustment layer. But it kind of darkens the sky, and I don't like how that looks. So what we can do here is we can have this only applied to the bottom area of our photograph. So we're going to use an we're gonna use a gradient to actually apply this to the bottom part. So when we're using filters, if we wanna modify a gradient, we're gonna use our masking gradient. To grab the masking gradient, you can head over to your masking tools here, and your masking gradient is going to live up top right here, and it's going to have the same basic symbol as your adjustable gradient. So if I click this, I can drop this down now, and you'll see that it's only applying this vignette to the bottom because I have that linear top preset selected again. So it's removing it from the entire top and it's applying it only to the bottom. So if I turn this vignette off and on, it does a good job of kind of blending that adjustment layer better with the foreground. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, In just a few minutes, we've really made a great photo here, and we've removed that bridge just by using a local adjustment layer. So I'll see you guys in the next webinar. Look out for more videos. Have a great weekend, and thanks for joining.